How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it is a Friday here on the show, and yes, I am here. A lot of people in the chat wondering if I was going to take a Friday off. I never take a day off. Sometimes I'm not here. Doesn't mean I'm taking the day off. But we got a lot to get into here today, including some notes from the new edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter as it pertains to AEW Collision. Of course, next Wednesday is the big day, and we are going to find out what this new television deal is all about. And over the last couple of days, you know, we've done various things on this show, math, speculation. I still don't have any news, and I don't think that we're going to have any news until Wednesday. But I am going to make a prediction today. I am going to make a prediction about what I think is going to be announced on Wednesday. And uh, this is a prediction. It is not news. I'm sure I'll have to repeat that about 70 times. This is like if we were doing a prediction show. Maybe, we, in fact, we should take predictions today. What does everybody think this is going to be? But I'm going to tell you what my prediction is. I'm going to tell you why. And then, of course, yes, we have more notes on collision, including what it's going to be called... Yes, the first episode of Collision has a name, a tagline. We've got dynamite ratings from Wednesday night. Update on Mac Jackson, who, of course, had a torn biceps, and they want to do a match, obviously, at the pay-per-view. We have an update on that, as well as where Robert Roode has been and uh, plenty more. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. Mike Sempervivi is at Sempervivi. And we're going to kick it off after the break, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. We got a lot to get into here today. And it's a Friday here on the show. So it is possible that I am going to open up those phone lines later on today. And maybe we'll take some predictions, like a prediction show, actually, for what you think the the number is going to be this coming Wednesday. We may actually not even know a number, but what's going to be announced on on Wednesday. And I'm going to hereby give my prediction right now, okay? This is my prediction. Write it down! So once again, this is a prediction, not a spoiler. I don't need this reported as news. I have... I have uh, Well, when I say I have no inside information, I don't know what they're announcing Wednesday other than there's going to be a collision show on Saturday night. And as we will get to, it has a it has a tagline, this debut episode of Collision. But I have talked to a lot of people over the last several days, and this is what I believe is going to be announced on Wednesday. You ready for this, Mike? Sure. I believe on Wednesday they are going to announce the debut of Collision, Saturday nights 8 to 10. They are going to announce that CM Punk will be returning on the debut show. And I believe that they have signed a new television deal that will cover Dynamite and Collision and Rampage. And I believe that deal will be in the neighborhood of $300 million over three years. If it ends up being a four-year deal, I believe it will be about $420 million over four years. I do not think anything is going to be announced in terms of a streaming deal with Max. I do not think the library is going to Max. I do not think the pay-per-views are going to Max. I think this is strictly a three-year deal where Dynamite is getting an increase. They are obviously going to get an increase in revenue from Collision. I believe that it is going to be a solid number. Hey, listen, if anybody thinks that $300 million over three years is bad or $420 million over four years is bad, brother, I don't know what to tell you. If you think it's bad, it's because you thought they were going to get a hundred billion or a billion dollars or whatever just for the television deals. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. That's my prediction. I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times, but I believe that that is what is going to be announced 
on Wednesday. Well, Mr. Cleo, let me then ask you why you believe then, in as part of your prediction, that you do not believe that Max will play a part in this and that pay-per-views and the library will be a separate deal or just not part of this deal? Well, I believe that because uh, have you ever gone on uh, Peacock and tried to uh, you know go through the, the WWE uh, archives? You ever tried to do this? I, I have, okay. yes. I do this every week. So, for example, uh, we watch these 1994 Raws, okay? I can't just go back and look for the date, okay? They are arranged by seasons. So, you know, you have to figure out, okay, what season is 1994? Well, it started in what, 91, 92? Okay, so it's what, season It's season three. Then you got to figure out the episode. you got to search for that way, okay? Do you guys remember when the pay-per-views first went to Peacock and what a disaster that was? We're like, you couldn't rewind live shows. Uh, there's the ongoing problem I heard from Christian that you can't fast-forward the live shows either. But anyway... Well. There were all of these issues with Peacock, and it took quite a while for them to to get those issues resolved, okay? I do not believe that Max is prepared to be running live pay-per-views and provide a video library for AEW. That's not saying that this deal will never be made. That's not saying that the deal won't be made, okay? It is possible they'll make the deal anyway. But I think that they have a way to go before they're ready to be doing live programming and libraries and that sort of thing. I could be wrong, but I believe that uh, they are not ready for that yet. And I, I won't... Oh, go ahead. No, Sorry. that's it. That's it. I think it's no, just we'll... going to be television. I think that everyone got really, you know, I think there were a lot of rumors that went around. And, you know, some people were going, well, you know, those rumors came from your board. Well, actually, there were people that heard these rumors before anything showed up on our board, okay? These rumors had been around for a while. I think that, that people heard numbers. I think they started, you know, coming up with ideas about how to get to that number. I think it's all kind of snowballed. And I think that what it actually is is what, you know, everybody figured it was going to be, which is we're adding a new show. We're getting more money for it. And as David noted, they've, they've just got a whole new television deal. It, it, it encompasses everything. But I think that, that, you know, looking beyond that to something else, I think that is not going to happen yet. Doesn't mean it couldn't happen in June. Maybe it'll happen in August. Maybe it'll happen, I don't know. But I think that this is solely a television deal for these three programs. And we'll see if they say anything about Bleacher Report, because in theory, they have the ability to stream live pay-per-view now through Bleacher Report. That's how many people order the show or they try to order the show on Bleacher Report, give up and then order it from their normal cable subscriber, as I have plenty of times because Bleacher Report sucks. So I, I don't know what their capabilities are right now. I mean, for a, you know, this is a company that has got a hold of MLB TV, which is what WWE was originally based on. I mean, Major League Baseball TV does a great job. You know, they have a stake in NBA TV. I can't believe that they're going to let an opportunity like this pass by. Again, if this is part of their thinking where they're going to roll Bleacher Report in and they're going to have live sports on there and they're going to have more live streams and they're going to take it more seriously. Again, we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. But, you know, I would be... You know, I, I would be surprised if that's not going to be something that they, if they don't announce it during the upfronts, because that's about the networks, that it's not something that they're going to be really into all summer long. You also have to remember that, like, here's the thing. Tony's not telling anybody anything. And if he is, they're not saying anything about it. But from talking to a lot of people, I don't think Tony's telling anybody anything. Okay. And, you know, he doesn't appear to be selling it like this is some thing that everybody's talking about. I mean, yes, there's a television deal. Everybody knows that, okay? There's there's graphics out for the deal that, that people in WBD have seen. But, you know, even it, within w, WBD, and, you know, they we've gotten a lot of stuff from them. Andrew Zarian has gotten a lot of stuff from them. And it, it doesn't appear that they know anything about these rumors either. It's like there's graphics for Collision. You know, there's no graphics for Max and, and all of this sort of thing. That doesn't mean they don't exist. 
That doesn't mean this isn't going to happen. But, like, all anybody seems to know from the AEW side, all anyone seems to know from the WBD side is about a television deal and nothing more. So it's not saying it can't happen. Guys, got to remember, when AEW kicked off, they had a television deal. It was like three or four months later, whoosh, got ripped up, new television deal, okay? So it's not like it has to be announced at the upfronts, okay? They they can, you know, whoosh, there's the old deal. Now here's a new deal for Dynamite Collision and Rampage. June, hey, we're moving to Max or whatever. July, it, it doesn't need to be no. Wednesday. It no, can be they, whenever, whenever they're ready. There's no, no this, hurry. No, this no requirements. Deal is- dovetailing at a time where they're putting on a new show for the fall and we are getting the fall season of TNT and TBS and True TV all given to us. So those things are dovetailing together. So yeah, it makes sense that we're talking about it, but it also makes sense that it's not like everybody in WBD knows what's going on or has any idea of what the financial situation is when it comes to this deal either. You know, we're looking into this more because we are wrestling fans and we're talking about a wrestling company and how that's going to affect everything going forward when the reality of that press conference and everything that takes place is really only going to be we are announcing collision for Saturday in all likelihood because it's going to be a part of our fall schedule. In theory, they don't have to mention anything at all about the TV deal. You know, we're the ones who are going to be talking about that. Obviously, that's going to be information they're going to want to get out, certainly at some point, but they could wait till the Monday after if they really wanted to. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Sorry, I was distracted. That. Um, they got massage chairs at Costco. Father's Day is coming up. Oh, Bro, wait. wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You're thinking about you on Mother's Day weekend. What have you have? What do you have planned? Oh, I got some planned. Oh yeah, but she would. What well, she a, makes you breakfast in bed because it's Mother's she Day. She wouldn't want a massage chair. Trust oh, yeah? me, I've tried. A lot of things I've tried and failed. But, uh... Well, you got it right twice, at least. And the reason I mentioned Father's Day was because I actually sent a picture of it to her, and her response was, Father's Day, bro. So now I'm thinking about it. And yes, she called me bro. Okay. Where were we? Oh, yeah. This deal? Anyway, we'll see what happens on uh, Wednesday. But what we do know... Well, you know, his collision is uh, is about to kick off, and uh, I'm just going to read this. It's got a lot of traction today. The debut episode of AEW Collision. As I try to say this with a straight face, the debut episode of AEW Collision will be renamed The Second Coming. I, I I have no jokes at all. Not thinking about any of them. No double entendres. Nothing. With that show will come a new deal with WBD. The announcement of the June 17 debut date, believed to be at the United Center in Chicago, and the return of CM Punk on a show called The Second Coming. WBD and AW's current agreement is a lot more about the... I mean, we've got the agreement and everything, but... Yeah. The Second Coming. Claimed to be yeah. a take on the debut episode of Rampage, which was titled The First Dance, which yeah. also took place at Chicago's United Center. Heavily built around Punk's debut, although he was never officially advertised. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, right in your face, that title. The Second Coming is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Like Lazarus. Back no, back. like Jesus. Oh, Oh. Not Lazarus. Oh. oh. I mean, he oh. was revived, but no one referred to it as, oh, it's the second coming of Lazarus. Just like, oh, that guy's back. I thought he was dead. I got to be honest. It was Here a 50-50 thing between the return of, you know, Jesus and a whole bunch of sexual innuendo. Could have went either way. No, Jesus' resurrection was not the second coming. It's like he's supposed to come again, oh. which would be like, actually, that would be the third time, wouldn't it? Am I wrong? What, I should Jesus? ask Craig. Well, from behind the rock? Well, that, that was would... Easter. That's how we have Easter. I know that, you idiot. But, like, oh. the the return of Jesus in the future, that's mm-hmm. going to be the second coming, they say. But I would figure uh. the second coming was when he when he came back from behind that rock. Actually, you're exactly right about that. Yeah, so this, this should really be, the, be third the third coming. coming. Yeah. yeah. 
Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, Wednesday's Dynamite averaged 877,000 viewers, up 13% from last week. I hear, is it true that Dave spent four hours on Twitter yesterday arguing with people over this number? Probably. I hope that's not true. The man needs help. I don't think he needs help, but I think that there had to have been something better to do on a Thursday afternoon. But uh, get, get him some help. Get, get him something to do. Then this is a this is a good number, everybody. Lord, eight hundred seventy-seven thousand. Because you know, yes, if you want to look at just the the finite number and do all your goofy comparisons and and put mud on the on Twitter and everything, I mean, you can do that. But I mean, SmackDown, Raw, NXT. Look, I think that the, they all say about strong competition, pattern. and they were all down except. Uh, NXT, NXT. <laughs> and Dynamite. So really, we should be celebrating Dynamite and NXT doing a great job because they they actually went up as opposed to the other two shows that went down. Well, did you 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 saw the quarterly breakdowns, right? I mean, one thing you can say about this week's Dynamite was, you know, it didn't have a dramatic fall from the lead in, you know, and from no, it there, was a it, straight line and then it went was up at almost, the end. And went up, you know, pretty significant, pretty significantly. I think it was like 58,000 or 53,000 people, whatever it was. But, yeah, I mean, it was a very good, very consistent show that kept people throughout. Again, how will that play into next week and the week after all that sort of stuff? You know, we'll see. But with the environment right now, with the playoffs, with other shows, with the, the Trump deal that was going on on CNN, with all of that stuff going on, Again, to to micro nitpick these ratings for either WWE or AEW is silly. Matt Jackson has been medically cleared to return following a partially torn biceps. He suffered the injury early into the three-way trios match, March 15th. So that was two months ago. He then worked hurt throughout the remainder of the 21-minute match. He later revealed he opted against having surgery was hopeful to return in time for Double or Nothing May 28th. Surgery would have put him on the shelf for seven months. So uh, at the end of the day, he made the right call because he is cleared about two months later. And, uh, yeah, he was cleared this week. So when you cleared, saw Matt— but does it, Cleared doesn't mean repaired, though. Well, it doesn't mean you know. it's it's fully repaired. But, I mean, what I, what I was told was that uh, it was torn, but it was kind of—it didn't bother him at all. Like, he wasn't cleared, but it didn't hurt, and he could do everything. See, that would be a lot. He he, like, wanted to get back. And so, eventually, they uh, they did clear him. So, he's still wearing that thing on his arm, and I'm sure he'll, uh, you know, it's a... <laughs> it's funny, because he actually wasn't technically cleared a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you remember when he was outside and he was doing, like, uh, rolling northern light suplexes yes. on the floor? <laughs> yes. Well, this was not something that was, was, like, planned, apparently. It was like, everybody is just doing whatever they're going to do. And then people are, like, turn around going, what is he doing? And he's out there doing... <laughs> so anyway, now he's actually cleared. Well. And away he goes. Although probably not to the second coming would be my guess. I have this feeling they may not be on that show. But we'll see. What are, who are we kidding? They're not going to be on that show. No. It's already been, been made abundantly clear. I wouldn't clear. think so, no. Robert Roode, back on the road to recovery after undergoing a second spinal fusion surgery. He had cervical fusion surgery done on his C4 and C5, which would be on his uh, 47th birthday, which was Thursday. And this was five months after he got surgery on C5 and C6. So, I mean, that sounds like three are now fused together, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not uh, good. So, uh, he said surgery was a success. Thanked his partner, Denny Ann, I believe, for her support. Another trip around the sun. Another trip to Birmingham. Quite a way to celebrate my birthday. Had a C4, C5 fusion to go along with C5, C6 in November. Big thank you to my rock throughout this entire process, Denny Ann. Been challenging, road to recovery. And uh, doesn't say if he plans to recover and come back to wrestling, but, you know, in, in theory, having three vertebra fused in your neck, you should not go back to wrestling. But the reality is, 
a lot of people have serious fusions and have gone back to wrestling. So I guess we'll see. But, I mean, all things considered, wrestling or non-wrestling, hope he's feeling great and uh, hope he lives a long, normal life now that this has been taken care of. Yeah, with all the tribalism and nonsense that takes place, you know, this is a good time to have a pause and, uh, you know, think about what the wrestlers actually give you, no matter who they are and how they do put their bodies on the line. And Robert Roode has had a long and really great career. It was one of the few things that was fun about watching Impact when he was there with Scott Demore and saw his evolution there through Beer Money, which was a good team, and then, you know, finally gets a shot in WWE, and did they use him perfectly? No, they didn't, you know, but he was good in NXT. They brought him up in a big way, the good interview with Renee to start things off, big box office, and, you know, yeah, they didn't do what they probably should have with him, but, you know, they gave him a comfortable life, and he's been able to continue to stack dollars and continue to enjoy what he does, so so if that's all over for him, got to thank Robert Rude because he's been great. Let's see. Calling it now. Tony Khan has hired Goldberg. Will purchase Dave Meltzer and Brian Elbers for $506,000. And new sponsor Viagra will promote Rampage. It is possible you might get one right. But that's uh, that's about it. Is it impossible that uh, that he signs Goldberg? Of course not. Do I think it's going to happen? I'm uh, I'm somewhat leaning against thinking that's going to happen. But I will say I don't think that it's impossible that he would do that because I I, I can do. see him wanting to do something where you bring in Goldberg, you have Goldberg, you know, squash a few people on the new show for a few mm-hmm. months, and then you know come Wembley or uh, they need stuff for for All Out. Well, you do Wardlow, Goldberg, Wardlow beats him, and uh, that's the short-term Goldberg run. I can see him wanting to do something like that. It, it would get attention, that's for sure. I don't know if I necessarily want to do that or not. You know, I think a promotional an agreement with Goldberg would be fine if you wanted to work together on some projects, including him maybe appearing in Wembley or something like that, but... I don't know if that's what I want to do when I got a guy like Wardlow who should be a Goldberg type and he's not. And I got a guy like Hobbs who should be a Goldberg type, but he's not. So it's like, I don't know, maybe utilize your own monsters better because I don't know if pulling the money you get out of Goldberg for doing this, I don't know if it's going to matter. Now, if WBD, you know, is interested in something like that because they want all the names that they can, we'll see. Back in a moment, I'm going to open up the phone lines. Get ready. Observer Live. Man, I'm obsessed with these massage chairs. They're on sale. Hmm. Why don't you just go somewhere and get a massage? Uh, well, because if you think about how much money you pay for those over the course of a lifetime, you'd save money getting a chair. Plus, you can do it every single day. I could do it during this show. I just imagine you using it like the quarter bed in National Lampoon Vacation. I got space right there Mm -hmm. where my YouTube plaque would go if I had it. No, I thought that was going over your right shoulder. Well, I mean, I'd store it there, you know. Just want to keep it here all the time, and we'll see what happens. Why wouldn't you just sit in the chair during the show and then just not turn it on and make all the noise with it? They're very quiet. They have one at the the gym. I sit in it every day. Yeah. You work out, and then you go sit in the massage chair. What kind of gym are you going to? It could look like this, Mike. Huh? See that? You can bring in Avery. He's got bigger arms than you. Oh, get out of here. I've seen pictures of him in his wrestling gear. The only kid I ever saw with loose spandex. The kid's going to come in here and flex on you in a minute, boy. Get out of here. Shoot. Give it it three years. Hanalei will choke him silly. I started her in jujitsu yesterday. I snuck her in at three and a half. And she actually did great. So we'll see. Not Anyway. Uh, Duke Hudson might be the best secret heel amongst the baby faces I can remember because he does it in a way that makes me feel like the character is a heel, but maybe genuinely does want to be better. You guys, I know you guys don't like NXT. Would you rather I went to calls? Take your pick. I know you guys don't like NXT, but man, they do some good character development on that show. The wrestling, <laughs> no, the wrestling may not be all that great, but, you know, with the exception of um, the dyad, like the schism, 
You just grew up in an era where I don't Saved know by the nothing, Bell was on before. Nothing about those dudes. Inside stuff, and everybody watched it. And this no. is this this is this is yes, it is. It's Saved by the Bell, the college years, and they're even out of college with Full Sail. You see, when they're talking to each other, or they're having a face to face with their competition, and they're in like the Full Sail kitchen. Like there's like a, yeah. a house sink. They're behind. in the kitchen. <laughs> they're in the gym. They're in that deadly parking lot, bro. The NXT parking lot has more personality. I won't even say a couple of names, but you know. Yeah. All right. Where's my phone thing? Did I hang up on everybody? Hopefully. Oh, no, there it is. Oh. Okay. Well, if you want to give us a call here today, because it's Friday, all right, here's how you do it. You call this number, which is what the kids used to call toll-free. Now it's just you call it and you don't get charged for anything. All right. It's uh, it's 844-913-2727. I bet you Jim in Virginia was the last one to dial us from a rotary phone. It may be. Or actually, maybe uh, John in Arkansas might still have a rotary phone. But anyway, uh, Dagan's on the line. Dagan, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Twitch homies? So I am curious to see how this Saturday collision show affects these house shows moving forward. Because it almost seems like to me this house show thing was kind of like a trial run for for collision. And uh, I'm just kind of kind of curious what you guys think about how that's going to move forward. Are they going to find another day to be able to do house shows? Or is it just kind of like, you know, th- there's so much going on in the schedule anyway that this is easy, brother. Those. This is easy. I want to thank you very much for the call. So, here's the thing. You know, these uh, these AEW wrestlers, when they sign their deals, you know, most of these deals uh, were for X number of dates. And they're doing significantly fewer dates. Am I still uh, am I still up right here, or did I drop off the face of the planet? No, I'm here. Still here. Um, yeah, most, uh, most of those deals were like, you know, we want you to work uh, 85 dates a year, okay? And most everybody is working way way less than that okay but you know one of the advantages to uh signing with aw back in the day was you made really good money and you never had to work four days a week you could hang out with your family you know you fly to your event you fly home you spend the rest of the week chilling out or whatever then you go back to work so what you what you really don't want to do is all of a sudden make all these people start working like four days a week but aw is going to have their crew and Collision is going to have their crew. And, yeah, sometimes people work both shows or whatever, but there's going to be a crew here, there's going to be a crew there. So if it were me, you would fly in for Dynamite on Wednesday, if you're that crew, and then you would do a house show on Thursday, and then you would go home. The other crew would fly in on Friday, do a house show somewhere on Friday, work Collision the next day, and then go home. So you're working, you're working, you know, 85 dates a year, maybe as much many as uh, 104 dates a year, but uh, not 104. Yeah, 104 dates a year, 52 weeks, two days, right? So 104 dates a year. So you know that's that's uh, you know you're putting in your time, you're uh, you're earning your money, but you're not there four days a week with two travel days. You're uh, at worst two days a week with two travel days, but um, you know. A lot of these things you can fly in in the morning and fly out afterwards. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if they continue with house shows. But if they are going to continue with house shows, that's how I would do it. Well, that's good. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, you know, we can go to uh, this fella here in uh, Anaheim. What's going on? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I sure can. And your car. What's going on? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Brian. Uh, shout out to Mike Sempervivi for uh, purchasing that Team Filthy shirt from the Filthy Tom Waller meet and greet I hosted for New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is Adnan from California. I was just calling just to see if yourself, Dave, or anyone from the Observer will be joining us for the New Japan Pro Wrestling Resurgence press conference next Saturday. In Anaheim? Uh, it'll be at the L.A. Dojo. At the L.A. Dojo. Well, that's going to be tough. Maybe Dave, but uh, I would bet that no one's going to be there for the uh, press conference. But you know what? Since you're here, tell us a little bit more about it, brother. NJPW1972.com. You can go ahead, and if you are media, 
figure out how you can join us for the Resurgence press conference where uh, Hikaleo and uh, Kenta will be there, uh, Tanahashi and Will Ospreay will be there, as well as the participants in the uh, first ever strong women's championship tournament will be there all for the press conference the day before for New Japan Pro Wrestling Resurgence. And if you're looking to get tickets for New Japan Pro Wrestling Resurgence, NPW1972.com also has your information on how you can get tickets and join us for that huge card happening on that Sunday. Now, if I show up at the press conference, can I be stretched by Shibata at the dojo as well, or is that out of the question? Uh, that all depends on waivers that would need to be signed. That is far above my mm, I see, I see. Sure not, but, uh, I mean, you're more than welcome to ask someone who has a higher pay grade than me. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank you very much for the call. Drive safe there. Yes, njpw1972.com, everybody. A lot of people are going to be at that press conference, sounds like to me. So uh, if you're media, you should head out to the L.A. Dojo. I should have asked if Shibata could could uh, stretch you. That's what I should have asked. No. Because we all know if I got me. my hands on that guy. He, you'd become Mr. 200% Yoji Anjo. Oh, get out of here. Not a chance. Look that one up, kids. I think everyone knows the story of Yoji Anjo. But I'd be Hickson, you see. <laughs> all right. Let's go to uh, North... North Kakalaki, isn't that what they call it? You'd be choked, son. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hi, you're on the air. What's up? Hello. What's going on? Hello? Hey, um, how you doing? Can you hear me? I sure can. What's up? I've been hearing that at the night of champions, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going to put the belts up against Roman Reigns, who already has two belts, and Solo Sokoa. And I hope WWE doesn't be stupid and make Roman Roman three belts. I was wondering what you were thinking about that. Oh, well, I want to thank you very much for the call. I don't think that's going to happen, and I'll tell you why. Because that show is in Saudi Arabia, and I do not think that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to go to Saudi Arabia. So I don't think that's going to happen. I don't uh, rule out the idea of them doing that match at some point. But if it does happen, I don't think Roman's going to be leaving with, with all of the belts. No, I think if you do a match in that case, it's probably to further what's going on with the Usos and with Solo Sokoa and any schism that's taking place between Jay and Roman. All right, if you want to give us a call, 844-913-2727. You can text me, 425-780-7566. Oh, man, the text messages... John from Arkansas here says, no rotary phone, bro. My late grandmother had one, though. I remember when I had a landline. Hmm. Yeah, for a long time. For this, With a rotary phone. For this show. I didn't have a rotary phone. Your parents didn't? No, we had buttons. I mean, hello. You didn't have, like, one phone, though, that was like, never no, mind. With on. your house, I, I would believe that. Like, dude, I know that early on there were rotary phones, and I know they lasted a long time. But, like, once the button phone came out, I mean, who was clamoring for a rotary phone? Oh, man, I love putting my finger in this thing and twirling it in a circle till my yeah. finger runs into that other thing, How and then it gets caught in were? there. Man, the handle on those things, if you hit somebody over the head with an old rotary phone handle, man, you were you were doing something. I want to know it never happened. I want to know who's going to be the first person to come up with a cell phone with the rotary dial. Cuz that thing, I'm telling you something. Oh, I'm sure there's for some a short sort of period of time. Got that on the front where not an like, app. You know. I'm talking about a physical rotary thing on the cell phone. Hmm. Because you would sell a lot of you would sell a lot of those short term. Receive faxes as well. I don't know about that. But. Operate as a beeper. All right. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the build thus far for Double or Nothing? What have you found underwhelming? Well, given we only have two matches, but this happens every time, everybody. I think it's about time that we just accepted that they're going to wait till the last minute to announce all of these matches, and then they're going to do 140,000 buys. And that's just the way it's going to be. And, yeah, it's it's working fine. We don't know if it would work better if we knew all the matches a month in advance because they never do that. But we, what we do know is that, you know, it's not like causing them to get 30,000 buys. So uh, I presume we will have more matches announced, you know, next week here on, uh, or on the Dynamite show. But for now, we it's, know, too. 
It's much like the WWE shows. You know, you know the matches are going to be good because the talent that's involved in them, and you know in AEW they're going to get time. So no matter how bad uh, some of these builds are on, on, on either side of the ledger, again, the matches usually make out because of the people that are in them. I mean, at the end of the day, this ain't 1994 where you have to call your local cable provider in advance to buy the show. You're going to decide the day of the show. you got to call for, for availability. Sure, whether you're going to get it or not. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they have done those shows. Like, that, that, that deal where, you know, we had the thing with Moxley and Punk, and then we didn't even know the main event till the Wednesday before the show or something like that. It's like, the thing didn't tank. I mean, maybe it would have no. done better if we would have known in advance. But you know what? You know what? We don't know. We have no idea of knowing if it would have done better if they would have announced it earlier. We only know that they announced it when they did, and the show did well. Yeah, so, and the, look, the title build has not been good. You know, I thought from the jump they did a good job putting the pillars out there. They were going to take a chance. They did like a 20-minute style WWE promo, which I thought, again, was, a, you know, if they didn't do it all the time, was a good thing. And how the whole thing is shaken out, like, I don't want to see any of these guys really besides Darby Allen face MJF, and I don't think it's really benefited anybody at all besides MJF. So, you know, this has been one of the weaker builds for one of the key matches that you've had, and I don't think it's going to affect the buy rate whatsoever. Person says, Brian, it'd be cheaper to hire someone to live with you and massage you every day than the upkeep of a chair. Is that true? Is the upkeep of a massage chair? What does that entail? How often do I have to get some geek coming to the house? I don't it's know. got a five-year warranty. You, you sit on a chair at the gym. I'm sure you're the type that doesn't wipe down the bench or the bars or any of that sort of stuff. Yet you're sitting in a big old nasty funky chair that somebody else was in. You better check yourself for ringworm. You got to spray the chair down before you get in and after you get out. Geek. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Look at all this information here about this chair. I was wrong, by the way, folks. I was absolutely wrong. Brian, I apologize for ever doubting the authenticity of these chairs because now I'm thinking about buying one of these chairs. I told you, dude. Except I can't figure out that it says it's got uh it's got four D massage. There's a so there's something involving time? Well, it's What's the fourth gravity. dimension it's talking about? Well it's how it makes you feel. It shakes you into one. But the time passes quickly or slowly? What does that even mean? I don't know. Yeah, these Man, things are awesome, then, dude. I'm telling you, if you, if you guys, oh, they, they have the they have those uh, ones at the mall. You ever been to the one at the mall? I try to walk past all those. Yeah, and things. they're all the same, I think, because I went to the when we went to uh, Boise, there was a mall with massage chairs, and then they have the exact same ones at the mall around here, and they suck. So if you've ever been in the mall uh, massage chairs, and you're like, "What's Brian talking about? These suck." You got to get in a good one, and then you're going to realize they don't suck. Maybe I could get it free if I just promoted them all the time. You think that's possible? You couldn't even get a free bottle of mics. Who listening here works for uh, Evo Max? Because I've been looking for a massage chair. If you could help a brother out. Maybe two of them. It's for my wife. Mine as well. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. But you know what? We're out of time. And we're going to wrap it up for today. See, those calls weren't so bad. You guys all worry about calls. Excellent, excellent batch of callers here today. And then uh, we're back on uh, Monday. I'll be back later on this weekend with Dave. So uh, you can check that out. Brian Davidi's show last night. Lots of uh, great stuff there. I'm going to be doing cameos this afternoon if you want one. I got some I got to do at uh, F4W Online. Brian Alvarez. Search can we on get cameo. one with you doing curls in it as well, too? There? Hey, if you ask, I'll think about it. Talk to you next time, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>